before COVID began, the subway was five and a half million customers a day. Buses were about two and a half million. And the commuter railroads were about 300 to 350 each. Our ridership pre-pandemic was about 1.5 million rides per weekday. Pre-pandemic, BART was carrying about 420,000 riders a day. Pandemic hit, you know, in a matter of days, we lost 90% of our ridership, 90%. Almost 80%. About 90%. Normally when a transit system has a, a budget gap, the way you address that budget gap is by raising fares. Raising fares really isn't the solution to this problem because that will just decrease ridership even more. What we're doing is we're decreasing fares. We're slashing the prices of all of our passes. We're reducing the prices of passes that connect up with our suburban bus service and our commuter rail operations. We're eliminating transfers, transfer fees, uh, so you can easily move from one bus to another without having to pay extra for that. And all of this is intended to be part of an overall strategy to encourage more ridership, thereby generate more revenue, while um, making it easier to use the system. And that's one of the reasons why the federal funding has been so important to us, um, because it gives me a, a revenue source to support, to support us while we do this get us back to normal. We're very much in support of the, you know, and thankful for the uh, the monies and the federal support coming in from Washington, D.C. Um, but that really is going to run out by the end of uh, this next calendar year or soon into calendar year 23. Um, and, you know, we've got to look at how we're going to do business in the future. instituted this historic cleaning regimen where we literally cleaned every subway car every night. That had never been attempted before. Remember, we have, you know, seven or 8,000 subway cars in our system. And, and on a given night, most of them or many of them are out on the road. We cleaned every car every night. We cleaned every station twice a day. We did provide masks, not just for our workforce, but for passengers through all of the subway booths that, that where the, the, the station clerks sit and made those available. Hand sanitizer was something the state of New York got very good at producing. We had our own industrial operation uh, upstate and literally millions and millions of gallons of hand sanitizer were distributed to every MTA facility. We erected the plastic barriers for our bus drivers to be separated from passengers. We actually put up chains to block passengers from going through the front door where they would actually, you know, be passing by the bus driver and started doing rear door boarding, which meant that we weren't collecting fares. And the good news is that um, after some, a bit of wrestling with the Washington, uh, all of those pandemic related expenses, Washington has acknowledged ought to be covered by FEMA. I strongly and firmly believe that it's my job as the head of this agency to do everything in my power to give my employees the, the safest environment that I can. Um, and that is both making sure that you as an employee get vaccinated, but that your coworkers also can feel comfortable that, you know, they aren't in danger when they're around you because you're not vaccinated. And so the mandatory vaccination policy just made sense to me. So right now we're about 80% vaccinated, 20% unvaccinated. And so now we'll go sit with down with our labor partners, you know, and negotiate and have discussions about what the impacts of that might be and, uh, you know, and see where we go from there. But certainly um, the operational concerns of, you know, losing folks, uh, to this uh, is gonna be something that we're gonna to have to keep our eye on. I am always worried about the potential disruption that a unvaccinated workforce may have, but I'm already having that disruption. 
with the employees who are getting sick every day because they're not vaccinated and recognizing that when they when they uh, catch COVID, uh, not only are they out of work for a standard period of time, but if they've exposed any other employees uh, here at CPA, they're out of work. By the middle of 2022, we'll be at about 50% pre-COVID ridership. You know, and to get to that, you know, uh, pre-COVID level number, we think it's in the, you know, the five to eight year range. We are now on the subways at about 55%. The buses are north of 60%. Reader railroads are about 50%. We're now up to about 700,000 trips a day. Uh, so we're only about 50% of where we were in a pre-pandemic environment. When somebody is coming back into the office, their first choice needs to be public transportation. We, so we need to be clean, we need to be safe, we need to be reliable, and we need to be their first choice. The point is to make it as attractive, uh, appealing as possible to use mass transit, because that supports what New York is, which is a dynamic place based on density and human interaction and creativity, uh, and not just folks sitting in office parks or you know even in their uh, second bedroom tapping away. Public transportation is a reactive service to other things. And what I mean by that is our ridership will come back as people have places that they want to go.